Hello, it's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week since I cried on camera. Um, I am in Texas right now. Um, after Jet passed, I uh, decided I need a little bit of a of a break to take some time to myself to think, to decompress. So I decided to uh, to drive uh, from New York to Texas. And um, it was great. It was a great drive down. I, uh, I stopped in Charlottesville, and then I went to, um, I stopped in Nashville, and then saw my brother in Oklahoma City, and then came to uh, a town in Texas called Van Alstine. It's like an hour north of Dallas. Um, and uh, it's been quite, it's been quite a week. Um, I think just to jump right into it, uh, you know, I want to talk about this idea of, of guilt and shame and, um, <clears throat> and trauma. Um, you know, I've, I've talked a little bit with respect to Layla and Jet, um, about, um, feelings of guilt, um, moments that I, felt like I, I just wasn't my best self around them, um, moments that I really regret. And it brought a lot of grief and a lot of weight because both of those moments happened. Um, moments of frustration happened the day before both of my dogs passed. And um, it reminded me a lot of like in the movies when you see someone who says um, like, they regret something to their, you know, they say something stupid to their partner and then the partner like drives off and gets in a car accident. And then that's like, that's what they remember. And, um, I felt a lot of guilt. Like both of my dogs went peacefully and they went humanely and they went surrounded by love. And I'm so grateful for that. So I don't, I, I don't regret, I have weight about the decision because it's just, there's a lot that goes into mentally goes into deciding when to put a dog down. But, um, but, um, so I don't regret, I don't regret doing it. Um, I feel like it was the right decision. I feel like it was the most humane decision and I couldn't see them in pain, but to be also a source of the pain, um, or a source of, um, anger or frustration versus just like getting to love them like incessantly their last days, that that like weighed on me very very heavily it still does weigh on me and as I was driving down I was just like I got to Nashville and I was just feeling the weight really heavily and um and then when I left Nashville and was driving to Oklahoma City I had a it was a nine and a half hour drive and um I in, in the times past when I've made these long trips and I normally have the dogs with me. So this time I knew that I'd be able to like go for the full nine and a half hours with a, a couple of stops and really just like be with my thoughts and not have to really think about much else. Um, and if anxiety has taught me one thing, it's been that, uh, I, have to sit with myself I have to sit with my thoughts and, and like let them be whatever they are um, rather than doing what a lot of people try to do and what I used to do which is drowned out drown drowned drown out all of the um, whatever is coming into the brain that says like you know this is stressful this is anxious like don't think about this push it away I've gotten a lot better about like just inviting those things in and then, and then letting myself sort of resolve them. But, um, I was listening to an audio book on the way down and it changed my entire perspective, my entire life. And I wouldn't have prior to this point, maybe said that I was someone who has struggled with, um, any kind of like real trauma. Um, but if I were to like explain the objective facts about my life, you would point at and be like, kind of seems like there's some trauma there. Um, and, uh, this is probably, I mean, I, I probably have a lot of caveats to this because it's just important to paint people in the right picture before, before going into like details about your life. But, um, my, my, my like very short, um, 
low fuse reactions to could be someone when I'm driving, could be um, my dog when I'm frustrated and I'm tired and I'm stressed. Um, I couldn't quite figure out why those reactions were happening the way that they were. Um, it didn't make sense to me. <clears throat> um, because they were just so, they felt so unlike me. And then I, I started listening to this book. It's called um, The Body Keeps the Score. It's a very popular book. I'd never discovered it until I drove down. Um, but it's called The Body Keeps the Score. And it's all about trauma and PTSD and how the body carries, the mind carries um, trauma from years past and how we forget it very easily and how it kind of comes up when we least expect it. And I, I just hadn't ever really thought about my life as one that was like traumatic. But if I were to tell you the, the facts, you'd be like, yeah, that's, that's pretty like intense, you know. Um, when I was almost three, I drowned um, in a pool and uh, I, had, I was riding a tricycle around um, the pool in my underwear like I do. And the back right wheel tipped in and my long story short, my family discovered me face down, completely blue um, in the pool and thought I was dead. So that's like prob probably dramatic moment number one maybe that I can remember. The second one is um, my mom being an alcoholic, and um, my mom is open about this. I, I like I still talk to my mom. Like I love my mom. She's a part of my life. So um, there's a lot of forgiveness and a lot of grace. But that was a component of my life it was my mom being an alcoholic. And then there was one one um, time, and I know she doesn't like like to remember this, and I certainly don't like to remember it. But where she actually hit me, and. Um, it's a weird thing that I've never really brought up and, and it's something that I've never quite talked about, um, maybe even with my therapist, but it, it was those types of things that were coming up. My family, my parents divorcing, um, my mom and my stepdad fighting whenever they got married. Um, you know, so moments like that, I can look back and see these points and these moments where I probably felt a lot of trauma or there were a lot of traumatic things in my life not to the degree of like um, a war veteran um, or you know someone who um, you know was sexually assaulted or anything like that like those are those are very real very heavy things and I'm not going to even remotely compare myself to that to them that's that is a different story it's a different weight but to a degree, I think we all carry some version or variation of trauma in our lives. And for those who don't, amazing. Because <laughs> it's not something that you really want to have with you. Um, but it can be a good teacher, I guess. Um, but um, as I was driving, these, mo these moments in my life kind of started to come back up. And I was like, oh, this is really weird. Like, I only read this to, or I was listening to this audio book just to kind of pass the time. And, um, and it started to really awaken things in me about my past and about how I think that started to give a lot of definition and clarity to why I, in the last year have been so reactive. Um, it's a trait that I hate and, and I hate it myself and I don't, I don't want any part of it, but it is there and it's really unnerving and it's really uncomfortable and then when it happens you're like what is happening in me like why am I why am I reacting like this to this person who did who turned weird weirdly on the street you know didn't even cut me off or to a dog who did something that like didn't matter it was inconsequential and yet there's this reaction to it and when I started to think about my reactions that are my own don't get me wrong like there's responsibility for them my thoughts, my actions are what I do. But it felt like I wasn't always choosing to do those things. It felt like they just happened. And then afterward, you come clear and you're like, well, what was that? What did I just, what did I just do? I don't, like, that's not me. And I totally regret that. Um, and, you know, and you, like, apologize to whoever or whatever happened. 
And it was really confusing for me. And it still is a little bit confusing, but it was really confusing for me to be like, what is, what's coming up right now? I don't understand why I'm acting like this. And then I listened to this book. I got, I listened to nine and a half hours straight and, and, um, and there's this element of trauma in my life that I think has gone undealt with. And so as I'm driving down to Oklahoma and I'm just like sitting here processing all, uh, processing all of this, I feel some of the guilt and the shame um, from those moments being, being lifted, not entirely, um, but, but partially. And it dawned on me that I have a lot of work to do, like when it comes to working through myself and my, my, um, my temperament, um, and, and who I am and who I'm becoming as a man. And I need help doing that. And I want to, you know, get back to seeing my therapist or a psychologist or something. And I feel like it's going to take years of work, um, years of working through and probably recalling a lot of uncomfortable memories that even right now I don't remember about my, my past, um, and, and starting to work through those. So not an exciting time, but whenever there is a name or an attribute or a thing that you can, um, give to something to help bring clarity to it, things start to like unmuddy a little bit. When I was going through anxiety, and I felt like everything around me wasn't real, like everything felt fake, like, like the world felt like a simulation. It's a very uncomfortable phenomenon. I didn't realize that the term for that was dissociation. Like there, there's a number of ways that things can be dissociative, but for me, my dissociation came from, um, th- it, 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 uh, the result was, was that I felt things were not actually physically real around me. Like, I was in some, you know, simulation and everything was fake. And so, um, yeah, I was just, um, giving a name to it, giving it and calling it, okay, there's trauma in my life. There's trauma in my past. This starts to make a lot more sense now why I would be so reactive to certain things that didn't really warrant that. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's what I'm working through right now. And, um, I've been in Texas for a week, um, I really don't like it here. <laughs> I came to see family. I came to see some friends. I came to see some projects I'm working on. Um, but but I, I don't belong here in Texas. And it's always so like awakening when I come back that I'm like, yep, yep, New York is the place that you belong. So um, I'm trying to be very present in, in where I'm at without without, um, you know, letting myself kind of spiral or be unhappy in the, in the, in the present moment. So, um, but yeah, so in, in kind of brighter news, um, I found, uh, a few things that I was like, was really hoping I would find. One of them is my, my camera, my camera, my camera, (laughs) my camera, my camcorder. Um, it's a little mini DV cam. Um, let's see if I can open it up. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, touch screen doesn't work, which is a real bummer. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I, 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 um... I only started using this in, um, I got it in 2005 when I was going to Africa. So this is almost 20 years old and I, it still works. I found the, I found a charger for it online and, uh, and yeah, it's like super, super, super cool. Um, let me see if I can like turn it around. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. I love it. Anyways, um, I'm like super super uh super excited to start recording on this and share it's just like i feel like i'm on an old vhs tape which makes me so happy (laughs) i'm like literally so thrilled right now um probably at some point i will i will take this and combine it with this once i create like a proper video but um yeah in the meantime i don't know if you can see it but 
20 year old camera and a an iPhone 15 Pro Max together. Uh, a love story, huh? Anyway, very excited about this. Um, so, anyways, that's a little high. That's a high for for the uh, for the week so far. But I'm gonna spend another week here in Texas, uh, get some good workouts in, see some good friends, um, and then uh, take a little road trip back up north. But all in all, just felt like giving an update since I haven't done one in a week. Um, but grateful for you. I'm thanks. I'm thankful that uh, you decided to watch this, and um, you know, I'm very, very excited to uh, work on myself and start creating really fun content that awakens me, um, and doing it in the best city in the world. So, all right, that is it for tonight. Um, you're wonderful. I love you. Be well, and I'll see you maybe tomorrow. Maybe not.